Oh, hey, I'm Scott Fugate. They call me the Jazz Evangelist because it's a really pretentious name and I'm, I'm into that kind of thing. No, actually, it's because I spread the good news that jazz is alive, especially in Atlanta and particularly in April. But of course, I don't have to tell you, right? Because, I mean, you know about all the events, the concerts, the clubs, the happenings, the festivals. The... No, you, you didn't go to everything in April? Well, I better give you the rundown. Okay, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. I just realized there's no way that I can tell you about everything that happened in the last month because there, there was just too much stuff that went on. So I'm gonna tell you about three. Three events that happened over the last month that you may have missed or maybe you were there, I don't know. One was Shaka Khan. Also, Incognito. And the Atlanta Jazz Party. Okay, Shaka Khan. First off, we hung out. You know, Shaka wanted to hang out with me. Yeah, well, I'm your girl. So, you know, she wanted to see me while she was here. Well, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, I'm lying. But I did actually get to follow her around with a camera. Hey, I got to go into the studios of WCLK where she gave an interview to Morris Baxter. I started at a really young age, 17, actually. All right, now that does have a story. <laughs> Arif Martin, during all the 80s, was my inspiration. Arif was really the genius. Um, he often referred to me as um, the instrument on which he could play anything. So those, are, those are really the songs that I think most highly of, the jazz and standards and things like that. I was actually afraid to do some stuff, like a lot of the jazz stuff we did. Now, do you remember the night that you wrote the song? No, because those were the fuzzy years, weren't they? I was fighting myself with myself at that time. Look, I wouldn't be the woman that I am today, you know, had I not, you know, gone through some of the experiences that I've gone through. I just hope that I can pass on some of um, this and it will help and, and I can aid somebody. On the musical uh, side, I'm still learning. I'm usually playing horn players, you know, like, you know, you know, Miles and Bird. I like to listen to that if I listen to music. I don't really listen to music at home. I want to keep my ears really as pristine as possible. I want to keep them clean so I can be, so I can tell the crap from the good. I went in the studio and then I heard this guy saying my name over and over again. And then doing the rap and I was like, oh, God, I'm gonna lift this down. Going through the fire to me is like taking a bath. When you go through that fire, that cleansing fire, you come out stronger. When you stop going through the fire, it's probably time to hang it up. WCLK 91.9 brought her to town and she did a wonderful concert at the Cobb Energy Center. She was amazing. She looked good, she sounded good. Well, take a look for yourself. <laughs>
that Beyonce, Rihanna, Christina Aguilera bow before the queen. You know, I kind of expected her to be past her prime, but did you see that? Let's move on. Incognito, they came to town. One of my favorite bands in the world, they're from England. They came to Atlanta and uh, we hung out. Actually, no, no, we really didn't. But, uh, but I did get to see them live and hey, look at this footage. Wait, wait, I, I'm not allowed to show you the footage. I didn't actually have permission to uh, to record it. So, so you're not going to see any footage. This is what it would have sounded like. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about it. Louis did a great job putting together this core of people. Uh, their hearts, their spirits, their talent is way beyond. So I'm really proud that I got a chance to sing with them. The way that Louis recruits and, and picks people to play in this band. For some reason, it always seems to work. People just always seems to get on and know what to do. And I don't know how it comes about. When I joined the band, I was just amazed by it. And I put it all down to the way that Bluey just has this kind of a sense. The biggest ego-free band that we've had, you know? There's like, nobody's got any egos. It's much more than just getting up there and trying to sell a record, you know? We're out here to do a job that is much bigger than we actually, we actually know it is. You know, every night we come off the stage and we realize that people come to us and talk to us and we realize that we've been teachers, we've been healers, we've been entertainers, you know, we've been a whole package, you know, and it's like, and I think this band gets it. That's right. what I like about this particular band. Kari Cabral opened for Incognito and it was incredible. Just look at some of the guests he had with him. Finally, the Atlanta Jazz Party. Something you may not have heard of before, even though it's one of the longest running events in Atlanta. This was its 23rd year, and it was amazing. First Atlanta Jazz Party, and it's it's outstanding. So many great musicians, and everybody's back there, and they're meeting each other. Of course, a lot of those guys know each other. A lot of these New York greats. <laughs> Party's great, been here a few times, and every time the top of the class of all the musicians, top of the class, all their styles, and Ed Pulitzer said it right, jazz is for dancing. The Atlanta Jazz Party is so cool. Okay, that about does it for the rundown this week. I might do another one. I don't know. You have to be nice to me. Or you can write to me, jazzevangelist at hotmail.com. Send me your emails. Make suggestions of concerts you'd like for me to attend. And I'll be there. I'll bring my camera and I'll pretend that I know the stars. Because that's how I roll. Peace out.